Welcome to Zombie Gates. By successfully playing through the levels of this game, you will gain a fairly deep understanding of logic gates, truth tables, Boolean logic, schematic drawing, and a variety of more specialized topics. My name is Will Patillo. I designed and helped build Zombie Gates, and I created this video to acquaint you with the game's user interface. Let's start with what happens when we begin the game. As you can see from this drop-down menu right here, I am in sandbox mode, a uh, game with no particular objective. Place wires by clicking one spot, then clicking another, and there's a wire has been placed. I can click inputs on and off by left-clicking on them. If I'm drawing a wire and I want to stop and not create it, I can right-click to cancel the wire. If I've placed anything and I want to get rid of them, I use this trash can, have that selected, then click on the items that I want to delete. If I extend the wire out from an input, the signal in the input is propagated through the wire. Multiple wires just goes farther. If I want to split a wire so that it goes in multiple directions, I select this connector icon, and now that same signal can go multiple places. Whereas if I simply cross a wire, then the signal will, will not affect it. This is how uh, you can have overlapping lines that do not interfere with each other. If I want to place gates, I click and drag to place the gate on the board. But actually right now the screen's looking kind of messy, so if I just want to clear everything else off at once, I press the clear button, everything's gone. Again, placing gates, and I can uh, hook the lines up to the inputs on the left side of the gate, output from the right side, and I can send a signal through it and see how this gate works. Uh, as you can see right now, I have an AND gate, which only outputs a ON signal when both inputs are on. I can try out some of these other gates to see how they work. Is an XOR gate. works, turns on when one or the other is on, but not both, or neither. Moving on to the gameplay, select a level from the drop-down menu. Unlike the sandbox, many levels limit which gates you can use. This level allows me to place AND and OR gates. All the others have been grayed out. At the grid on the right side of the screen, there is an arrangement of yellow smiley faces representing humans, and green skulls representing zombies. The pattern in which the characters are arranged on the grid is analogous to a truth table, where characters represent ones, and empty spaces represent zeros. The bottom row is thus 00, zero the next 0, 01, 10, one zero, and 11. One one. For those familiar with binary, the game is counting up from 0 to 3. At the bottom of the grid, there is a row of red buttons. If I press the step button, all of the characters move down one row. Whenever a character, human or zombie, steps on a button, the corresponding input on the left side of the screen turns on. If I continue pressing step, all of the characters will go off the grid and cycle back to the beginning. If I press run, the characters advance through a full cycle automatically. Let's see what happens if I connect a wire from input D to an output and press run. The input signal propagates through the wire and controls a Tesla coil, which zaps the characters standing on the buttons. At the end of the cycle, the game displays which characters got zapped by the Tesla coil by drawing X's over them, and which characters made it through unharmed. This time, the row of zombies got zapped but a human also got zapped. The info box in the upper right informs me that this was a loss. To win, I need the Tesla coil to zap every row of zombies and not to zap every row of humans. For this level, that means sending a signal to the output when, and only when, inputs C and D are on. To make the X's go away, press the reset button. This also resets the info box back to displaying a hint about the level. You may notice that the output terminal has three places where I can connect a wire. Which one I connect to 
will determine the color of the electricity created by the Tesla coil. Sending a signal to multiple outputs at the same time will create additional colors like purple. For this level, it doesn't matter which output I use. In later levels, however, zombies will have frequency shields that only allow them to be zapped by particular colors. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a fun and educational experience from this game. If you have any questions, feel free to write them in the comment section below.